All right, guys, welcome to part two on this car. I didn't think there was going to be a part two, but there's a part two. So it's really cold here in Texas, but we're still going to work on Norris's car. I got a story to tell you, and it's kind of embarrassing, but it's how it works with old cars. You see on TV how, you know, people get old cars back to the road and they never have issues with them. Well, this one did. So, I, as you saw in the last video, I drove it around multiple times and didn't have any kind of issues. So I was like, Norris, come over, drive the car, and, you know, let's see what else needs work. So, we're driving it around and it starts sputtering and then it dies. And then we're like, ah, oh, it's not good. So, we finally get it to start again after letting it sit for a little bit. We drive it a little bit farther home and then it dies again. And it ended up we had to push the car all the way back home. Luckily, it was a warm day and it wasn't freezing cold outside, but it was acting like it had a fuel issue. Um, something was not allowing fuel to get to the carburetor or the carburetor was full of trash, that kind of thing. What we did first was we looked in the gas tank and let me show you, let me see if I can uh, show you what we found. Now, just so you know, this gas tank is a new gas tank and the sender is a new sender, so I wasn't really worried about fuel issues, getting crap in the carburetor or anything like that. But if you look down here, you can see the end of the uh, pickup tube. You see it right there? There's no sock on it. There's no little filter thing. Uh, the, the inside of the tank looks decent. I mean, oh, I found the sub of the filter. I found the sockets down in there, stuck on the bottom. Um, so this the bottom of this gas tank is decent, it does need cleaned out, and we will address that. But uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to take this lid off and put a new sock on. So here's the new sock, and here are the new gaskets. I bought a new sender gasket for it, but I don't think I'm going to take that out, just because I don't think it needs it. Here's the old sock that I fished out of the tank with the... Uh, with the magnet tool, it doesn't really look that good. I'm surprised how crappy that looks. Uh, I was able to use my minion colored rubber glove to slide the new one on. You just push it, put your hand down in there and slide it on, and that's how it looks. So that right there should be good enough. We shouldn't have any more issues with um, particulates getting into the fuel system. The reason why is because we have that sock on there now. Yeah, it's kind of gross in there. Then we also have the fuel filter that goes in the carb. When it gets fuel injected, it'll have a pair of filters before the fuel pump, so I'm not worried about it now. The reason why I bought another one of these gaskets, you look at this one, even though it's technically new, it's probably five, six years old, and it's really floppy and thin, and it's just best to put a new one on, which is what I have. So this can all go back together. New sock is on and ready, and that... I'm going to call good for the fuel system. Sometimes the fixes are the littlest things. I put a fuel filter and different fuel hose on this anyway just because it was leaking a tiny bit from here so that's taken care of. When I pulled the carburetor apart there was a little bit of trash here but when I pulled this float bowl off there wasn't anything in it so I'm like it's not fuel like I thought it was and I've been turning the motor over spinning the motor over and I haven't been getting spark which makes sense because when I when the motor we tried to you know turn it over while we were you know bringing it back home guess what I mean there wasn't even, you know a burble there wasn't even it didn't even begin to to want to run and there was no hesitation nothing it was just spinning with zero zero fire I pulled a spark plug wire off I had an old spark plug didn't get any spark and that led me to the distributor I used my test light to make sure the distributor was getting power it was through this wire but let me show you what I found out once I started looking around so I push this up in here you see how it moves all this stuff up way more than it's supposed to so what I think is happening is this yellow wire isn't making really good contact and when I went to pull um, this whole clip off the yellow wire actually came out so I'm thinking we have an intermittent uh, problem with these this wiring in the distributor we'll take it apart and look at it and then we can see if it will run I did when I play well around with this and turn the car over I did get it to start just for a little brief moment so I'm pretty sure that's the issue all right I repaired the yellow wire 
it should all be good now. All the wires should be like they're supposed to be. Let's see if I can do this Ugh. with one foot. <laughs> So, to get this headlight system working, there's a couple things that need to be done. I pulled this tube off of this um, vacuum port right here in the intake, and I plan on plugging off one of the ports and then running uh, the vacuum source to this. So this is a check valve, and one lead goes to uh, your vacuum bar, and then one lead goes to your headlight switch. So that looks all correct. I don't see any real issue with that. What I do see is that there's these relays that direct vacuum on one side of the actuator to the other and they're completely missing, they're completely gone. So we have to install those, we have to make sure all the vacuum hose are routed right. Um, like for example this, that's just chilling there when it's supposed to be connected to stuff. All that kind of, all that kind of stuff has to be done. So I'm hoping to get the vacuum headlights to work with just installing uh, these actuators. If not, I'll have to dig a little bit deeper but it's basically just plugging in hoses and you know seeing how it goes I come over here to get vacuum hoses and this is what I see in the window there's some creepy birds man I don't know if they're looking at themselves they're looking in here to want to get in here but every day this is where they sit and they just sit here and stare at me super weird thanks to a generous donation from parts cars we now have all the correct hoses for this car I just had to rob maybe one or two so what I've done is I pretty much have hung these up like this. Um, I haven't hung them up yet on top of where they go because I, it's easy to troubleshoot them like this. So according to the owner, these worked great years and years ago, but since then some parts have been robbed. and um, Basically I'm just putting it back together. So I have the relays ready to go. I'm, fingers crossed these actuators work. I had to cap off part of this vacuum line, but now this is hooked up to the engine. And so barring no other vacuum leaks and hoping that the headlight switch and the actuators work, when we start the car, the lights should go down, and when the lights are turned on, they should pop up, and vice versa. So fingers crossed this is all that it needs, and I just have to spend time putting the relays up where they go. As you noticed in the last clip, nothing happened up here. While the engine was running, I went and I checked uh, for vacuum at both of the relays, nothing. So what that means is there's something under the dash that's the problem. Because I pulled this right here and I am getting vacuum. So that means the, the, the headlight switch didn't do anything. It's supposed to switch. Uh, when you pull the headlight switch, you're supposed to get vacuum at the top of the relays which wasn't happening so I just put my head in the window right here and I could hear hissing coming from underneath the dash so we now have a vacuum leak under there so let's we'll see what's missing and what's not looking underneath the dash there's a couple things so we have this no override switch at all completely just hanging down there's this hose and then there's this cut one right here I don't know if you guys can see any of that but Oh, it's just a rat's nest under here, which is not surprising. So I need to re-plumb all of this stuff and make sure it all works again and is put together the correct way. What I first want to do is verify if the headlight switch even has hoses on it, which I've seen in the past. So they're either hooked up wrong or they're um, no hoses at all. So the easiest way to do it is you have to take off the trim panel here, you take out the kick, you got to unbolt the this dash pad and then there's two bolts to hold the column that all drops down and you can actually get access to this um, I don't know if I can show it on camera but there are hoses um, attached to this headlight switch I don't know if you guys can see in there but there are hoses so that's good which will tell me which one is going to where and then from there I can plumb up all the hoses from the engine all that kind of stuff and get them where they need to be but there's a quite a bit of work still left to do so here's a very simple uh, diagram for this vacuum system. 
So we know we have intake uh, manifold vacuum port vacuum and I believe that it goes from here to the vacuum tank. So I'm not really worried about here up. What I'm worried about is this. I know this this isn't even there. That's completely gone. So we have this line and this line that are basically just hanging open. It didn't cause the engine to run differently before because it was capped off, but now that we're going to use it, we have to make sure that it works. So what we're going to start with is I'm going to start and make sure that this line right here is there, and then once I know that one is there, I'm going to go from here to here. So the blue stripe that goes to the pull-down override switch, I think that one actually is there, but this one has been either cut or it's gone. I saw it there. They go down, but they don't go up. And the number one reason for that is going to be those. So we will test those before I bother to spend the time to take them out of the car. Um, but luckily, here in this box, we have brand new ones. So if we have to replace them, there they are. Before we replace the actuators, I'm going to test them on my trusty vacuum pump here and a good hose that does hold vacuum onto the actuator and this should make the headlight go down it's not really doing anything so I'm pretty sure that the uh, actuators are toast we'll go ahead and pull those out see what they look like I'm getting these headlights apart there's some good things found some surprises so coming under here you can see I've already taken a couple of these springs off but there's springs in here that are new and the other surprise, which is weird, is somebody has already pulled these actuators apart and I guess rebuilt them. Either they didn't do a good job or it's been too long since they did it. So I've extended the rod all the way and you can see that the, the seal inside of it is bad. Um, but new actuators will definitely fix that problem. So. Pretty simple to take out, just these two on this side and the other two nuts on that side. And then they'll come out, and then we'll do the other one, and then we'll put it all back together, and we'll see if the headlights work. I have the, the, the top hose on, I have the top hose undone, so when I move my finger, you hear vacuum. And no matter what I do to the headlights, it doesn't stop the vacuum. If you look at this other headlight switch, which is a random one that I have, and you unplug it, it only allows vacuum when it's pulled out. When it's pushed in is when it allows vacuum. So this headlight switch inside of this dash is bad. If you watch it pull it out, I can do this with one hand. That's what this one, this one up here is supposed to do, but it doesn't. So, and with that plugged in, the headlights will go down. You want to turn the headlights on? Something else Norris asked to be fixed was, one, the temperature gauge doesn't read correctly. So it's a new gauge and a new sender, and I had the same issue on my Corvette, and removing this resistor made it read a little bit more accurately. We'll see. If it doesn't work, I'll put the resistor back. But the other thing is this radio. It doesn't want to turn on. It doesn't want to work at all. So I have my test light. We're going to try to figure that one out. So what I've done is I've unplugged the part of the battery, excuse me, I've unplugged the pigtail for the radio and as most radios there's battery 12 volts and there's ignition power so we can test all those in the ground so first this should have battery 12 volts 
right here. So it does get 12 volts battery. And let's turn the ignition on. And I don't see it getting ignition 12 volts. So that might be the reason why the, uh, there you go, see, not lighting up. That might be the reason why this radio doesn't work. Uh, let's test the ground out. We can attach this to the positive side of the battery. That lights up, so that means the ground is good. So I think the issue we're going to have is this ignition, ignition power wire is no good. Or at least one of the connections is bad. We'll see. I traced the wire back to the two splices that it had, and there's no power going through either. Whoever installed it actually did a good job because he spliced it in with solder, and it looks pretty good. He can't put heat shrink on it and all that kind of stuff. But check this out. I figured, well, if that's the case, it's got to be the fuse. You see the third one up? So there's the bottom with the red stripe, then directional signals above that, and the radio one above that, and that is a blown fuse. So um, next thing I'm going to do is replace the fuse with another 20 amp, and then see if the radio will work. Jiggle some wires around, see if I can't get the fuse to blow. I don't know why it's you know not working, but um, that's the next step for this. Hopefully it's just a fuse. That'd be great. All right, there you go. Radio works. So the issue was just a blown fuse. Don't know why, but I got to kind of solder, not solder, I got to heat shrink back these wires, and then we'll be good to go. temperature and then make sure it stays there which it should just, I know I just want to check the accuracy of the gauge so if you notice in the uh, last video segment the horn button was rattling around and making this awful noise and the reason for that are these plastic rivets right here so this one is looks like it's kind of given up the ghost and it makes it so this doesn't stay tight and because of that the horn button will rattle around luckily I have a few extra rivets I can throw in um, and fix that problem. I mean, it might be something as simple as the horn button rattling, but it's so loud and so annoying that we got to get it done. Well, it turns out the uh, rivets weren't really broken at all. So what had happened was, you see how the, the center is just pushed a little bit above uh, the parts that come through? They had just kind of worked themselves loose. I think this is a reproduction uh, piece and so what I did is I took them out and then all inserted them back in pushing the centers below the tops right here and what that has done is it has firmed everything up and so now it doesn't jiggle around and wiggle like it used to do so hopefully that will fix it enough for now and if it ever happens again Norris will know what the fix is going to be either get another one of these or mess around with these rivets again but they're not broken so I didn't feel like there was a need to uh to mess around with that any further. With the rivets finished, it's actually a lot less wobbly than it was. Uh, this still moves a little bit because it's supposed to, but it doesn't, it's not going to make that that rattle sound like it did. Next time we drive it, we'll make sure of that, but pretty sure we're good to go. 